Hello there. Um, so I did a video a little while back, a few weeks back, um, basically ranting and raving about how terrible the code base to Butcher's Creek is. Um, or has it been months now? I don't know. Time has no meaning to me anymore. But I have been working on it slowly but steadily. Um, the code base is still a mess. But it's slowly getting better and moving toward a release at some point this year. Um, so since I already started some sort of uh, transparency looking behind the curtain uh, of the game with the, you know, Butcher's Creek code base is a mess video, um, I thought I would just kind of continue that. That's not something I usually do. Usually I develop games pretty... Not not really in secret, but I don't really show much of it, of it publicly. Uh, basically because I don't want to, one, be beholden to um, people's expectations for the game actually releasing. Um, because there are quite a few prototypes I've started that I've never released. Um, and in fact, I, in the future, I think I'd like to uh, do a video sharing some of those. Um, but anyway... Since, like I said, I've already been kind of transparent with this, and since I've already committed to finishing and releasing this, and it's pretty far along, um, I just thought I'd continue with that. And I went over the combat a little bit in the last video, but I thought it'd be interesting to do kind of a closer look at that in, uh, in a different video. So, first of all, I want to show the nice physics prop sounds that I've gotten in since the last time. They're not, they're not source quality. And that's an interesting thing that I actually never noticed until I started doing these sounds is just how, um, how precise all of the prop sounds are in source and how there's all sorts of different sounds for like a thing dragging, a thing like hit, hitting something lightly or heavily, um, just, they're, they're very good. Um, these are not as good, but they still, you know, makes it, actually it makes it a lot more fun to beat stuff and kick stuff around. Um, that's actually why this is here. Like, there's no purpose to that, except if someone decides they want to try breaking that, they get a, a little, fun little cascade of sounds happening. Um, and it's some nice set dressing. But anyway, I've delayed long enough. The point of this video is to show the combat and explain a little bit how the combat works and why it works that way. So, I'm gonna open this door and we have an enemy here. And I already failed to block. So, first thing is, uh, it's very much patterned after Condemned, as I've talked about. Um, this guy here has a few different attacks with slightly different timing. And if you hit the block button at the right time, you'll block his attack and not take damage. That um, underswing like that is the fastest one. And then you have your own attacks, of course. He can block them. He can counterattack. You can kick to sort of put him off balance. And if you hit him enough, he dies. Now, I'm going to reload this and talk about something else. Because that's very, it's very simple combat. Again, it's patterned after Condemned, which the base mechanics were very simple, and what made them fun was how satisfying uh, the feel of the game was. Um, of course, Condemned also had an entire team of people doing animations and mocap and stuff like that, which I don't have, unfortunately. Um, so as you can see, the animations and the different attacks that the enemies can do are not going to be at the level of Condemned. Um, I may add a few more than just this, but there's it's not going to be like Condemned where the enemies just have tons of different... tons of different moves they can do. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, the, what I wanted to talk about is, although you only really have these two slashes, um, I tried to animate them so that they feel as satisfying as possible. And one of the little details that I have that makes sense to me and hopefully makes sense to other people is that the more you hit a, you hit somebody, 
Yeah, we'll get into ignore that. That's don't worry about it. Um. Oh yeah, and some enemies are start with their back to you. You can sneak up on them and <laughs> kill them instantly. Mm. Anyway, the more that you hit an enemy, the more it will build up a invisible behind the scenes rage meter. In fact, let me get a a weaker weapon. Uh, let's see. Probably not that. Um, the board is really good for this. It'll build up a under the hood rage meter. And that's not for triggering any sort of like special attacks or anything. All it does is that when it hits a certain threshold, your character will start doing the same swing direction over and over again. Like they're really beating on this person and start like swearing and grunting louder. <laughs> so let's, yeah, let's see if we can trigger that here. Like that. I don't know if you can hear that very well, but yeah, you start like getting real angry. Um, another thing I want to show, and I uh, just move along into here. Some of the weapons you can block with the weapon itself, and it functions like a normal block would. Some of them, like this board, have a less effective block where you literally block with your forearm. Um, which does decrease the damage, but it doesn't completely negate the damage, of course, because they're hitting your forearm. Um, we also have the kick, which I talked about a little bit. Um, the kick is good for... You can, you can instantly put them off balance. You can kick them to move them backward if you're fighting several guys at once and you want to get some space. Um, you can kick them. If you... Uh, here, let's stagger. If you kick an enemy that is already staggered, they will fly back even further. And most entertainingly, let's get this set up. Uh, he's not going to cooperate, is he? You can... Come here. I still haven't fixed this pose, by the way. That will, that will be a better pose <laughs> at some point here. Well, that wasn't a great showcase of that, but let me, let me reload this. Um, you, can kick it, you can kick stuff into enemies. And that looks like, hold on, let's, oh, and you can kick doors down. I actually just added that, like that. Um, it doesn't really, it's, there's not really an advantage. It just kind of feels right to be able to do that. So you can kick, you can kick objects into, en into enemies. Um, why did I go in there and fight that guy? That's not what I was trying to show. I need to go, eh, anyway, let's get a different weapon. Hammer. This is kind of, you know, a Condemned has the, uh, the, Lead pipe is sort of its workhorse, uh, its iconic weapon. I feel like the hammer is sort of that for this game. It was the one that I started all of the tuning of like the effects and everything with. Um, and I still think it's the one where it's like the attack speed and everything is the best, is the most satisfying. But there are more powerful weapons like the wrench. Later on, you'll get some, like, a sledgehammer. You get a pickaxe at one point. Um, so anyway, what I wanted to show you was... Let's spread them out a little bit. Go back here and... Bonk! Um, you'll notice there are some sounds missing, which is the enemies don't really make much noise right now. They Oh, he saw me. They just have a... Get him. Get him. He missed me. Wow. Oops. Um, they just have sort of a generic death sound. That will change. They're going to be yelling at you and swearing when they get hit and stuff like that. I just need to get around to actually talking to people who will record those and getting a bunch of different variations of ah and fuck and oh my teeth <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, all done. Uh, okay, one more, one more restart. Maybe. Maybe more than one. Let's just knock this down again, because it's fun. Yeah, it's just very satisfying. Um, kick that door open. I'm gonna send that guy back, and... Back. Well, that wasn't the most satisfying ragdoll in the world. Uh, but that sort of... <laughs> it knocked his head off. Yeah. Um... That's just to show off there are some exploding gas canisters that 
you can you can kick to explode guys <laughs> which uh it's not so when i first started this game years ago um it was a little more serious than it is now <laughs> i need to get a few more body sound effects instead of just the one um and i was there were a bunch of things that i that are in the game now that i was wary of adding just because i'm like uh, i kind of want to keep the focus on like the brutality and make it a little you know sort of more realistic and grounded um and then i realized that just wasn't very fun so that's when i added stuff like well you have a kick and there are exploding things and there's um you know a little more of this goofiness and also you can throw your weapon so, actually, a very legitimate way to do a fight would be to <laughs> just keep doing this to one guy. Oh, man, he is not. Let's see, what else do we have? Oh, I threw all of them over there. So, let's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, when you're low in health... This is one of the things that is just, it's goofy. And the whole, I should say that, um, anyone coming in expecting this to be a really grim, dark, edgy game is probably going to be disappointed because while it is definitely very dark at points, um, it is set in the same universe as Pony Factory and Squirrel Stapler. So that'll get, that should give you an idea of the tone. This is probably the darkest of those three games, but it still has that same darkly comic tone um and one of the things is to get health back you take pictures of horrible blood and gore that you find you can't take it would be too unbalanced if you could take pictures of enemies so your own blood and gore that you did does not count but in the environment you get health back from finding photos like this of terrible things or finding the actual terrible things yourself There we go. Um, yeah, that sort of covers it. The combat, again, it's it's very simple. Wait, why does this wrench look different? Hmm. Maybe I'm just not used to it with um, just the player light. Hmm, that's weird. Anyway, um... Yeah, that about covers the combat. Uh, I'm, there's a few more things I want to show off. And in fact, let's see. I think I'll just show that off here by placing a thing. Instead, I don't want to spoil too many of the actual levels. No, actually, I know what I'm going to do. Eh, this is my test level. Been around for years. Um, I will show you... And I have to find it. Some live game development happening here. Uh, what did I call it again? I haven't placed... Ah, here we go. Saw trap. So, <clears throat> you can do some fun things with kicking enemies. Other than just kicking stuff into them and kicking them back. One of those is... there. This, this trap doesn't have a sound yet. Ignore that. Let's find a... Well, we could, we've done a lot of the board. Let's get... I uh, don't want to spoil the end. We'll do the hatchet. So, I'm going to I'm gonna spam kick here. Just to kind of get him back where I want him to be. Hmm. So... Gotta let my stamina recharge. Oh, and we missed it because... Because <laughs> the other guy hit me. Uh, let's go. Woo! Oh, that wasn't very impressive. Sometimes they go just careening, and it's it's really funny. Um, let me let me actually reposition these guys They're in a better position to show this off. Put him here, put him over there. Um, oh, this pit might this pit might not be set up to actually do. The proper, like, guy falling in pit animation. Um, we'll, we'll see. It might be very goofy looking. Which is... 
which is a bit of a spoiler. I'll alert them so I don't insta-kill them. Oh yeah, it doesn't do the animation, but they will fall down the pit without the animation. <laughs> and just hit the bottom, crunch. Oh, I'll kick him into the saw trap. Here. I think there, there's... Oh. <laughs> uh, that was a bit lame. It actually has to do... The amount they fly has to do with the velocity they have going into... Woo! <laughs> Oh well. Anyway, there's there's traps you can kick them into, and finally, the most entertaining bit is I'm gonna show the uh, exploding gas canister again. This time in this area where it's a little more well lit, so you can see how hilarious it is. These were a pretty recent addition, also. <laughs> they just go flying. Uh, let me. There was a bit of a hitch. One more time. Oh, I missed him. Here. <laughs> That's. This is probably overpowered, but I don't care. It's fun. It's a little bit of the same philosophy as Dusk, actually. Oh, and that one went off too. <laughs> Where, like. If something's fun, like, like if something is fun, fun is like the, the main governing, you know, what's the, whoa, what's the, what's the word? It's the main governing principle. Like, for instance, their ragdolls are really stupid and ridiculous. They just, like, look at this. It's, it's dumb. And maybe that's gonna undermine the horror a bit to have but it's really fun too same with the exploding the exploding gas canisters Oop, there he goes like they're kind of stupid but they're very fun some props flying and yeah it's just a great time goodbye head sounds like heads the head needs a physics sound also um yeah that that basically covers it eh. Doing. That's uh, just a really informal uh, look at kind of what the Butcher's Creek combat is like, and like I said, it's I was I started this whole <laughs> bye bye. I started this out being kind of well, no, I didn't start it out, but I, with the. Uh, uh, with the last video about Butch Butcher's Creek, I started uh, being pretty transparent with it and just kind of showing behind the curtain. So I thought I would keep that going. And really, um, my main fear with this game would be people coming and not really having the right expectations, if that makes sense, because it's this is a, a solo indie game. Um, and there's a lot of things that, like, I'm on my own not going to be able to make a here let me let me fight them with the uh where is it the knife <laughs> this one's kind of funny because it doesn't flinch them very reliably but it doesn't take much stamina um so you can kind of <laughs> you can kind of just plink away at them and then kick them when they attack and it's extremely rude but yeah anyway since i'm just one person I'm not going to be able to make, like, anyone's dream condemned meets manhunt snuff film sort of game. So my worst fear would be people coming in with extremely high expectations for everything and not having those expectations met. So I'd prefer being very open about what the game is and letting you guys see, even in advance, you know, what the game is. And so there's no uh, not these built up built up expectations of it being something more impressive than you know this <laughs> but i hope it's going to be fun uh i hope it's going to be unsettling there's some there's some you know some horror moments uh there's uh story the interesting kind of out there story has what i think is some pretty fun combat and Ultimately, I hope people will find it fun, uh, find it entertaining. So that about covers everything. 
I will talk to everybody later with uh, some sort of video. I don't know what quite yet. Uh, so have a good rest of your day. Bye.